Hi, this is Evil Trout, and I wanted to show you how easy it is to create a component in Ember.js. So in this case, I want to create a component that allows us to create a reusable knob widget. And I'm going to be using this jQuery knob plugin that's pretty sophisticated. And if, if you just look at it, you can click and drag and you get a value. And it's uh, pretty customizable, as you can see. And I'm just going to use Bower to install the plugin. So you do this by typing Bower install dash dash save jQuery knob and it's going to go out and download things for you. The only other thing you have to do before you can use the plugin is to uh, open up brockfile.js and find the app import line that's importing Ember data. And in this case, we don't actually need Ember data, so I'm just going to change it to import uh, jQuery knob js jQuery.knob.js. And this path just comes from looking in the vendor directory after Bower installs it, and this is the file that actually does all the magic for the jQuery knob. At this point, we're ready to start up a server, so we can type ember server and go to our local 4200. And we'll see it says, welcome to ember.js. So we're off to the races. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up application.hbs. And I always feel like this welcome to ember.js thing is kind of like, you don't have a real project until you change it. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, welcome to knob city. And then if we look in our browser, that works. Then I'm going to create a new file uh, in the same directory, and I'm going to call it uh, index.hbs. And Ember will automatically look for this file in your project, and it's a great way to prototype things, but I should say that if you are making a project that's anything a little more sophisticated, you shouldn't just rely on this uh, application index default behavior. You should be creating proper routes that have their own handlebar files associated with them. But in this case, anything I add in this index.hbs will just automatically be appended at the point that the outlet occurs in the application file. So just as a test, I can say, let's show a knob. And if we look in our browser, it'll say, let's show an op. So that's working. So now we have to decide what we're going to be calling our tags. So in Ember, the only rule for um, your component title is that you have to use at least one dash. Um, this is unfortunate in the case of something like knob because it's, it's very well suited to a short title. But uh, it's not too much trouble to just add X hyphen or you could, whatever your project was, let's say it was discourse, you could call it something like that. But in this project, we're just going to call it X knob. We're going to go out and we're going to go into the components directory. And we're going to create a new file here, and we're going to call it the same thing that we just called our component. And that's how Ember is going to know uh, what file to look it up. So in this case, it's xknob.js. And I'm going to say export default ember.component.extend. And that's all we need to do to find our basic component. However, if we look in our file here, nothing's happened because our component doesn't do anything at this point. So let's look at the jQuery knob API, which is on their GitHub project. And what they show here is that to uh, initialize a simple knob, all you have to do is use a jQuery selector on some element in your DOM and call a knob method on it. So let's go ahead and add support for that to our Ember component. I'm going to define a new method here called initialize knob. And it's going to be called when the did insert element uh, event is triggered on the component. So this just means call me when this component has been inserted into the document. Um, at this point, we have access to a variable called this dot dollar sign, well, actually a function, this dot dollar sign, and that is a jQuery selector that points to the current component. So that makes it super simple to initialize the knob because all we then have to do is call the knob method on it. And if we did everything correctly, we can look in our file and bam, there it is. So let's just clean up our markup a bit. Um, we don't need this let's show a knob thing anymore. Um, I want to show you just how easy it is to pass parameters through to your components. So uh, one of the things that the knob allows us to do is customize the foreground color. So you can, I'm going to make up a parameter here, I'm going to call it FG color, and I'm going to pass a value of red in quotes. So when you surround uh, an attribute in quotations like this in Ember.js, it tells Ember to pass the string value and not a binding. So if I go back to our xknob file, uh, it, it has a parameter that you can pass it, fg color, and whatever you pass to it will actually be used as the color. So if we pass it the value of this.get fg color, and then look in our browser, you'll see that now the component is red. So our knob is a little useless right now because 
while the user can select a value by clicking and dragging, that value can't be used anywhere. It's just kind of held internally within the plugin. What we really need to do is make it so that we can bind that to something in our Ember universe so that then the Ember project can use it in a cool way. Let's open up index handlebars again. And we're going to add a value binding here. And I'm going to say value equals rating. So here I haven't surrounded the attribute in quotes. And that means that I just want to create uh, a variable called rating uh, in my template. And I'm going to bind it to the value attribute of the component. Now we need a way to have the jQuery plugin notify us when the value changes. So if you look at the documentation here, this actually is pretty simple. They have a hook here called change. And if you and change, if you provide it with a function, it'll get called with a value v, and then you can have access to the new value. So all we need to do to use this is to say change function v, and then we'll say this dot set value v. Now, if we look at our template, it actually doesn't work. And the reason is, is because if you call this within the change function, this is specific to this function and not in the context of our template. So the easiest way to fix this is to say var self equals this, and down here change this to self. And now within our template, you can see here that as we click and drag, we're actually getting the new values. So, I mean, at this point, you might call it a job well done. But the truth is that there is a bug with this. Uh, the binding is only actually working one way. So in other words, as I use the, uh, the, the widget within my template here, it's bound to this value. But if this value changed elsewhere, it's not going to update the template. So the easiest way to illustrate this is to open back up index.hbs. Instead of just outputting rating, we're going to make this um, an input field. So here you can see it says value 38. But if I change this to 1, it's not reflected in my in my widget, so that's not good. Um, so fortunately, the jQuery knob has an API for this, and what you do is on your element, you can call val with the value, and then call trigger change. So let's go back to xknob, and what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new a new function that gets called when the value changes outside of the. Uh, outside of the component. And to use this, we're going to use a number observer. So let's say value changed is the name of our function. And we're going to say observes value. And then it's as simple as saying this dot this dot val this dot get value trigger change. So it's a one liner. Now let's go back here and see if it works. So we have 32. What if I said 12? What if I said 120, 55? And yeah, that's all you really need to do. Um, and now we've created a reusable component. In case that's not obvious, uh, you can go here and we could take our knob and we could make three of them. And because they're all bound to the same value, they're all going to change in unison. I mean, if I made this one not, you could see that This one changes, and then these two work the same way. So anyway, I hope that this uh, was pretty easy to follow and that you learned about how components can be used easily to wrap uh, jQuery behavior. Uh, you should, uh, By the way, you should always wrap jQuery behavior in a component if you can, because it's really bad form to allow your Ember projects to just make jQuery calls arbitrarily. They should really be isolated in these components for reuse, because um, it just makes your code a lot simpler and easier to use, and it allows other people to build observers and computed properties on top of it, and uh, it's just generally good practice. So thanks for watching.